Welcome family and friends. I just ask, can everybody hear me in the back? Stuart, can you hear? Yes, thank you. Welcome family and friends to the graveside and witness to the resurrection of Mrs. Clara Jean Cobb Barber. The Barber family and I thank you for all who are able to come today. We thank you for all who have cared and offered kindness throughout the years to Clara and the Barber family. We especially thank Ebenezer Presbyterian Church being a testimony of faith in these times. I ask you to check your electrical device and make sure it's on vibrate or off for honor of God and the family. Thank you. Now let us gather around the word in God's creation and among the communion of saints already in glory. Listen to these sentences of scripture. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we certainly will be united with him in resurrection like his. Jesus reminds us in the Gospel of Matthew, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. The psalmist reminds us of where our help comes from and our faith resides. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. We are thankful for the faithfulness of God through all times, especially now. We acknowledge God's faithfulness even when ours is fragile. We trust in God even when pandemics occur, health suffers, and death occurs. Even though we experience death, we do not grieve as people who have no hope. For our hope is not in the temporal things of this world, but in God and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let us hear the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let me have my singers come. How great thou art. How great thou art, I'm sorry. Of God's faithfulness in all times. How great God is. If you know it, please sing along. Fair. 
take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow with humble adoration, and then proclaim, my God, how great Thou art, then sings my so my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul. common in the Presbyterian Church, we say, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of all comfort, our burden today is our loss and her gain of Mrs. Clara Barber. We thank you for giving Clara to us to know and love as a faithful companion in our journey of life. In your boundless compassion and grace, those of us who mourn, receive our prayers, O oh God, mixed with tears and broken wishes. We have been painfully reminded that great sorrow is part of the risk of intense love. Even in this present sorrow, remind us that our love is always worth the risk. Indeed, our lives have been enriched and blessed and grown deeper in faith from having known, loved, been cared by and cared for, Clara. Please be our light in the darkness of this grief and bear us up as we journey through the shadow of death. Help us discover the resources you have placed within and may we be open to the love and help of those around us. You have invited us into your community of faith where nurturing, serving, and the mission of Jesus Christ is lived out. Give us your direction and wisdom so we may finally see in death the gate to eternal life. That we may continue journey here on earth with confidence until we are reunited with those who have gone before us. The communion of saints through Jesus Christ our Lord and all the people said, Amen. Amen. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, we are called to confess things we have done and those things we have left undone in the sight of our Lord. We humble ourselves in confession as God cleanses our hearts and redeems our memories, therefore renews 
our confidence in the goodness of God. Please pray a prayer of confession in silence. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn anyone else? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone and the new has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Please pray with me. God of all comfort, we come seeking your embrace and instruction in the word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. There's three scriptures that I chose today. Don't worry, they aren't long. But they are telling. The first is Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. A little background on the prophet Isaiah reveals God's promises to be with them through difficult, life-threatening circumstances. Isaiah declared God's Israel's Savior and ours. Listen for the word of the Lord. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and the flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. The epistle lesson comes from 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8, and it says this. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, where the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only me, not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. And the gospel lesson comes from John 11, 25 and 26. And it says this, I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Hear what the Spirit of God says to the people. Thanks be to God. In the prophecy of Isaiah, the Israelites, and we are reminded to not fear in the face of adversity, in the face of conflict, or in the face of danger. Yet feelings of nervousness, concern, worry, flood our emotions regularly as a human response to uncertainty and uncertain times. We will need to take our feelings, name them, and offer them in faith to God who is the source of all power and comfort. Then allow the Holy Spirit to attend to us as we receive from the Lord. Isaiah reminds us that God has redeemed us and we are God's people. God claims us in the phrase, I have summoned you by name, you are mine. I can only imagine living 98 years like Claire on this earth with faith would allow one to see the world in good times and in uncertain times. She was alive during war times and peace times and uncertain times and everywhere in between. She was there when Junior came back from Vietnam she was there after a liver transplant. 
She even cooked at Ebenezer's kitchen long ago. Clara, living along as she did, she was here when many others were not. Isaiah has an interesting way of giving us images of going through the water, rivers, and fire obstacles with God being with us and making us not alone. Our current environment. Many family loved ones are not able to be with each other since the pandemic and high infection rate. I'm not aware of the situation around Claire's condition if that was the case. However, we are promised that God is with us even in the hospital room where we are alone. Recently, a wife lost her husband and was not able to see him for a prolonged period of time until he died. Even in our grief, we are not alone. God will be with us through all times in our life. Clara has passed through the waters. She has passed through the river. She has passed through the fire. And God has been with her every step of the way. I am reminded of a, of a pastor and author saying, we are all on loan to each other for a time. That was one of the most profound thoughts that I received is that look around you right now, we're all on loan to each other in this community. The lesson to us all is to be grateful for each and every day. Be wise who you spend your time with. God continues to use all of God's faithfulness through his community to share good news, such as the ending to suffering, end to chronic pain in a hip or a leg, we fight the good fight of life until we are made or invited to rest in the presence of God or called to our eternal rest and glory. Clara is in that rest, even though we feel sad and miss her presence. I personally have missed her saying in a testimony of faith and trust in God's promises, when I would ask her about her aching legs and I'd sit in her living room and I'd say, how are you doing today, Clara? And she said, in her way of saying things, because she had a way of saying things, we all know. She would say, I'd say, how are you doing today, Clara? And I'd sit in that one chair that's left of the TV and she would sit in her recliner and she'd say, my legs, you know, my legs are in pain and my back hurts, but I ain't going to get any better. She'd say to me, I ain't going to get any better. One of the most famous phrases I remember of Claire, she said this, I may give out, but I won't give up. I'll say it again. I may give out, but I won't give up. Sounds like Claire. Claire is one of the first people when I came to Ebenezer long ago in 2013, trying to incorporate the homebound folks into ministry that God has called me to at that time. And I asked her, I said, we are creating a prayer team. And she's like, well, what's that? And I said, the prayer team, I said, since you can't come, you don't feel comfortable coming to Ebenezer and worship because you feel a little shaky on your legs and unstable. I said, what you can do in ministry is you can pray for Ebenezer in the direction. And she says, I can do that. So she began to pray, and we felt the prayers. Clara can say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 
leave you with this story of an elderly woman named Stella Thornhope as she struggles with her first Christmas alone. Her husband had died just a few months prior through a slow developing cancer. Now several days before Christmas, she was almost snowed in by a brutal weather system. She felt terribly alone, so much that she decided that she was not going to decorate for Christmas. Late that afternoon, the doorbell rang and there was a delivery boy with a box. He said, Mrs. Thornhope, she nodded. He said, would you sign here? She invited him to step inside and close the door to get away from the cold. She signed the paper and said, what's in the box? The young man laughed and opened up the flap and inside was a little puppy, a golden Labrador retriever. The delivery boy picked up the squirming pup and explained, this is for you, ma'am. He's six weeks old, completely housebroken. The young puppy began to wiggle in happiness at being released from captivity. Who sent this? Mrs. Thornhope asked. The young man set the animal down and handed her an envelope and said, it's all explained here in this envelope, ma'am. The dog was bought last July while its mother was still pregnant. It was meant to be a Christmas gift to you. The young man then handed her book, How to Care for Your Labrador Retriever. In desperation, she again asked, who sent me this puppy? And the young man turned to leave. He said, your husband, ma'am, Merry Christmas. She opened up the letter from her husband. He had written it three weeks before he died and left it with the kennel owner to be delivered with the puppy as has last Christmas gift to her. The letter was full of love and encouragement and its admonishments to be strong. He vowed that he was waiting for the day when she would join him. He had sent her this young animal to keep her company until then. She wiped away her tears. She put the letter down and then remembering the puppy at her feet, she picked up that golden furry ball and held it to her neck. Then she looked out the window at the lights that outlined the neighbor's house. And she heard from the radio in the kitchen, the strains of joy to the world. The Lord has come. Suddenly Stella felt the most amazing sensation of peace wash over her. Her heart felt a joy and a wonder greater than grief and loneliness. Little fella, she said to the dog, it's just you and me. But you know what? There's a box down in the basement I bet you'd like. It's got a lot of little Christmas tree in it and some decorations and some lights that are going to impress you. And there's a manger scene down there. Let's go get it. God has a way of sending a signal of light to remind us life is stronger than death. Light is more powerful than darkness. And God is more powerful than Satan. Good will overcome evil. The people living in darkness have seen a great light, the prophet said. And on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Even though you feel grief now, Clara is in the light of God. And her light we take with us in faith to overcome any obstacle 
that we're faced with. And that's truly living out our faith, Claire's faith, and Christ's faith. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is common in our tradition to affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed, so I ask you to receive the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He had ascended into heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And he will come again to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please pray with me. Oh God, before generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your servant, Clara, whose baptism is now complete in death and raised to new life. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace you gave her that kindled in her the love of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and enabled her to re to serve you faithfully as a disciple, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and a member of Ebenezer Church. We thank you for how she cared for her children and taught them the right way with love. We thank you for ending of her chronic pain in her back and legs and joints. We are grateful for the peace given in the new imperishable body in the presence of God Almighty. <clears throat> she does not fear falling now. She needs no wheeled walker. She is made new. <clears throat> she is free. We offer to you, O oh God, Junior, Judy, and Jimmy, who has lost a loving mother, we offer Christy, Ryan, Stacy. We offer all the great grandchildren, the great great grandchildren, all the families in this season of grief. And to those who lost a friend, comforting God be with us all so to deepen our faith and live faithful lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Into thy hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Clara Barber. We acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her, receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of saints in light. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Please pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth and as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. 
Now may the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. That serves the public if you want to walk this way, we'll let y'all bring people in here if you'd like to. If y'all want to speak with the family, they're going to be greeting each other. You're greeting over there on that side, too. If you'd like to go to speak to them, you're more than welcome to.